Hi everyone, this is Shantosh and you are watching my YouTube channel, Microscopy for All. Microscopy is the act of using microscope to view tiny things that cannot be seen with the unaided eyes. Now, if I ask you, what is a microscope? Yes, you already learned that microscope is nothing but an optical instrument consisting of lens or combination of lenses for making an enlarged or magnified image of a minute object. But do you know that there are other types of microscopes are available? Those are so powerful that we can see objects in nanometer scale. Well, uh, then let's talk about different types of microscopes in brief. This will help you to understand microscope easily. Microscope are of three types, optical or light microscopes, electron microscopes, and scanning probe microscopes. Optical or light microscope commonly use visible light and the system of lenses. Use defined properties of light such as uh, refraction, diffraction, reflection, etc. to generate a magnified image of small object so that you can see it. There are mainly two types of light microscopes, compound microscope and stereo microscope. Compound microscope, they are so called because they are designed with a compound lens system. The objective lens provides the primary magnification which is compounded or multiplied by the ocular lens or eyepiece. Compound microscopes can be loaded with several objectives for magnifications ranging from 5x to 100x and eyepiece, eyepieces are generally 10x, so resulting in total magnification of 50x to 1000x. Compound microscopes may be upright where objectives are above the sample stage or inverted where objectives below of your sample stage. We can zoom it here and we can clearly see it. Now you can ask me which compound microscope should I use? There are some benefits and limitations in both the systems. As the objectives come directly from the top in case of upright systems, so they are generally not suitable for live cell imaging. Whereas in inverted system, they are very popular for live cell imaging because you can easily use culture flask or culture dishes. But it is not like that you will be not able to do live sample imaging in upright system. You can use water dipping objective where the objective directly can come into the culture. But the main problem will be maintenance of the sterile working conditions. In case of inverted system, there is no contact between objective and sample. So sterile working conditions are possible. But in upright system, that might be a challenge. Otherwise, upright microscopes are well suited for fixed samples, particularly glass slides and all. So, the final choice is yours. The second type of light microscopes are stereo microscopes. Stereo microscopes are relatively low power compared with compound microscope, usually below 100x. So, here is the objective, which is generally 1 to 2x. And eyepiece is 10x. So total magnification is 10x. They can have single fixed magnification or zoom magnification system where you can further zoom it as per your requirement, even as per the specification in the system. The benefit of this system is the working distance which is much longer than the typical compound light microscope. This allows the work to be done on the specimen while it is being observed through the microscope. And that is why it is also known as dissecting microscope. There are different types of transmitted light illumination microscopes are available. Bright field, DIC, dark field, phase contrast and polarization microscopes. The bright field microscope is a 
common illumination technique we generally use in compound microscopes that we use in school, colleges, even laboratories. In this microscope, we can easily see the fixed stent samples. As for example, this is a cross section of mouse kidney where we can clearly see the glomerulus. And this is a grayscale image of the cross section of male flower hazelnut tree. But the contrast is very poor in case of unstained live samples. In DIC microscope, a special component is inserted into bright field pathway so that we can get a pseudo 3D effect. So it enhances the contrast of the sample. And in case of dark field microscope, the field is dark and your sample will be glowing. We can clearly see over here, same sample, how it looks in drug field microscope. Because this microscope does not allow the scattering light that is coming from outside of the sample. So this is a grayscale image and here we can clearly see the eye of fruit fly. It is impossible to take this image in a bright field microscope. Next is the phase contrast microscope. In phase contrast microscope, we can clearly see the growing live cells that is not possible into a bright field microscope. So in phase contrast microscope, the details of the cell appear dark against lighter background. And in polarization microscope, what we'll be doing, we'll be using the polarized light rather than the normal light that we use in bright field microscope or dark field microscope. So now, in polarization microscope, the polarized light interacts strongly with the sample and generate contrast with the background. As for example, you can see how a lens cleaning tissue looks under polarization microscope. With polarization microscope, it is possible to determine the color absorption st structure, composition, and the refraction of the light in different isotropic and anisotropic substances. Let's talk about reflected light illumination. In reflected light illumination, light reflects back from the sample rather than transmitting through it. And this kind of illumination is possible both in upright microscope and inverted microscope. In reflected light illumination, the sample need to be labeled with a fluorescence molecule or a fluorocomb. Light hits the sample through the objective and then the resulted emitted fluorescence passes through the same objective and goes to the uh, detector. These microscopes are called fluorescence microscope. Contrast is excellent because signal will come only from the specific fluorocomb of interest. So you can see your specific structure of interest clearly against uh, black background. In this cell, you can clearly see the yellow mitochondria, green actin filaments, and blue nucleus against black background. Now there are different kind of fluorescence microscopes are available. And all these microscopes have their own kind of benefits. As for example, confocal microscope will help you to cut down the out of focus light. As a result, your image will be neat and clean. Multiphoton system will help you to do thick tissue sample imaging. Total internal reflection fluorescence microscope will help you to do imaging of the uh, cellular membrane. And finally, the super resolution system will help you to break the diffraction barrier that is 200 nanometer. So using super resolution systems, you can go further inside the cell and see the small structures. Now we will move to electron microscope, so the second type of microscope. Electron microscopes, they use beam of electrons and electromagnetic lenses rather than visible light or glass lenses that we use for optical light microscopes. The shorter wavelength of the electrons helps to get a greater magnification and a better resolution that is up to uh, 0.1 nanometer. Now there are two types of electron microscopes are there, scanning electron microscopes and transmission electron microscopes. In scanning electron microscopes, a beam of electron scan the surface and the bounced off electrons are collected by the detector and 
image is formed something like this so scanning electron microscope help you to see the surface topography of your sample so this is a uh, drosophila compound eye and you can clearly see the omatidia this is a, a scanning electron microscope and this is the sample chamber so if we see inside this is what it looks like so your sample will be on this tub electrons will be coming from this way and it will be bounced off and it will be collected by the detectors in transmission electron microscope a beam of electron transmitted through the thin section of specimen and this is what the image look like so this is a hemocyte cell of Loister, you can clearly see nucleus, mitochondria, and the vacuole, etc. And this is what a transmission electron microscope look like. So this is the sample holder, and this is the vacuum chamber. In TEM system, imaging of object is possible at an unprecedented resolution, right down to the individual atom. So in this aluminium-based alloy, you can see clearly the individual atoms. But there are also limitation in electron microscopes. Because electron microscope requires hard sample processing, so live specimen imaging is not possible in these systems. Now we will move to the third type of microscope that is scanning probe microscopes. In scanning probe microscopes, uh, a physical probe is run across the surface of the material. It's something like a blind person feeling their way around the object. So, the very sharp apex of the probe determines the higher resolution in these systems. So, there are mainly two prominent types of scanning probe microscopes are there. In atomic force microscopy or AFM, what happens? A laser beam is focused onto the cantilever and reflects into the detector. Now, the deflection of this cantilever, which is attached to this tape, is recorded by the uh, computer and a image is constructed based on touching the surface of the specimen on the probe. Second type of scanning probe microscope is scanning tunneling microscope or STM. But in this system, the main problem is that only conducting matter uh, samples can be used. So here what happens, both the tip and the uh, sample are connected with the voltage supply. And then a tunnel current occurs when the tip is close to the sample and the tip movement is translated into the image. Now using scanning probe microscopy, we can visualize the topography of a surface down to a atomic resolution. So these microscopes are incredibly powerful. Here you can see a uh, image of uh, mycobacterium and this image has been taken using uh, atomic force microscope. Now this is the schematic diagram what we learned throughout this video today. In my next videos, I will be talking in more details about all these microscopes. So thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for my next videos.